Come on, you youngins. You come here and sit by the fire also. And I'll tell you the story about when I was not much older than you were. That cold, bitter night still sends chills down my spine. It was biting cold on that night, the night our house burned down. And as I now get it on in years, I want to sit down in writing the events as they happened while my mind can still recollect. My three brothers and I were of age when our family went to Sunday meetings. We wore knickers. Otherwise, it was overalls and bare feet, most often as we could. Ma said that we were showing godly respect for hard-earned money if we could make a pair of shoes last to four boys. In my opinion, feet just felt better outside of shoes, not the right size. As for our baby, when I was a boy, I thought they were just didn't count for nothing, anyhow, until they could carry a pail of water. Our farm was about an hour by wagon outside of town on prairie land, but near enough to timber so as to make it possible, with less effort than digging a well to get logs to build a real home. We had neighborly folks living not too far from us. Ma said that with the youngins coming every year or so, it was a blessing to have a midwife only two farms over. Pa and the men had just this past summer built our house with boards, sawed out of logs we brought in from the woods. And before the first frost came, we all moved in and got settled. Ma and Pa, along with the new baby, had a little room to the side of our living quarters. And us four boys, we slept up in the loft. It was my job on that night to tend the fire when everyone else went to bed. Later on, Pa was to come and check hourly for the remainder of our repose. In the winter, it was pretty early, most always, when we turned in, so as to save on candles. And some days, it was just plain warmer in bed under wool blankets and quilts. The first order of going to bed ritual was to remove the chill from the bed up in the loft. But with four of us sharing one bed, it wasn't too long before our combined heat would make the bed warm as oven. Once we were all settled down quiet up in the loft, we could hear Mama and Papa talking quietly, and then it was not too long before their soft, melodious voices wooed us to sleep. Our farm animals sure put off good heat themselves to keep the chill out of the barn, but on this night, Pa and his four fellows, as he called us, had moved the animals into the old soddy, with it having one outside wall and all, there wasn't any way we would lose any sleep. Mama had me set right up in front of the fire in her rocking chair where she would sit and do her sewing and nurse the baby and such and loaded me over with heavy covers. Once everyone had turned in but me, well, I'm sorry to say that my rocking was more active than it should have been. Not at first, but after a slow spell, it was almost as though the chair took on a mind of its own swinging back and forth like a dinner bell out on the porch on a windy day. Now don't get me wrong, I ain't blaming nobody but myself. When the chair got to rocking and the motion started me moving off its usual location, the next thing I knew, the edge of the quilt rocked right into the fire. I ran for the water bucket lickety split, but the water didn't toss onto the fire because it had turned to ice and didn't budge. Fire! Fire! I yelled. Fire! Fire! Pa was the first one to view what I had caused. And though it was fast, I saw the look that told me I was going to be doing a whole lot of chores in the future. In the dead of night, the neighbors couldn't see the fire smoke, so it was left up to us to manage on our own. It was a sad trail, following Papa from where our house used to stand to the old soddy. And though a little cramped for space with the animals, their place was as warm as a summer day when you could go to the swimming hole. Together we knelt and gave God thanks for the abundance that we had, the farm, our lives, and, uh, and all that we were able to save. Papa told God that he knew God would take care of us all because he was the best father anyone could have. And though day was just beginning to break, we all settled down for a little rest. It wasn't too much time before Papa was a snoring and Mama looked peacefully with Baby snuggling up against her. Given the proximity of the event to its cause, my carelessness, well needless to say, for me rest was not immediately forthcoming. I asked God to forgive my unfortunate error, 
and thought it was a good idea to give thanks for saving us from peril. It was then that it happened, even though I had caused the disaster. It seemed that God was smiling down on me. The lantern with its low glow gave little light, but even in the dimness I could see the animals stirring and hear their low natural rumblings. And as I drifted off into peaceful slumber, I dreamed a dream that I will never forget. It seems that we were not the only family sleeping with animals that night. From my dream, I awoke in another place and time. The people I could see wore different clothing to that which I was accustomed, the garments all looking like nightshirts. As I looked on the scene, it appeared that something of import was happening because all eyes were directed on the spot that gave a glow of sorts. And as I moved forward to attempt a glimpse of the event, what came into my view were a woman and a baby, much like Ma holding our newest brother was the child in the woman's embrace. She wore a smile of satisfaction, and as she gazed down upon her tiny charge, she gently pressed his back in his wrappings. Though it should have seemed odd that most of the occupants were kneeling with bowed heads, I too lowered myself to kneeling position with the emotions of awe and wonder. It wasn't too long before Minnie departed, and the young mother and the child and the man who must have been the papa laid on the hay to rest. My mind was telling me that this was the baby Jesus, but could it be so? Around me as I watched this blessed scene, the animals began to stir. They were the typical kind you would find in most places that kept stock. A pack animal, in this case a donkey, a cow, sheep, hens, and such. And yet, in all the years of my life, I have never dare tell what occurred next, for though it was dreamed, I still would have been thought, huh, touched in the head. Now that the years have passed and I am old, many young'uns think me touched anyhow for the lack of modern ways, so it don't matter when I tell them that the animals in my dream that night spoke a wonderful tale that my ears now attest to hearing. I have it here in my pocket, though it ain't real necessary for me to recall the words or the night. It was brought comfort many a time my heart was burdened. What I can't produce is the sight of the stable lit up with the light like I've never seen since. The music sound of the animals doing what know how they were supposed to do. Well, since I am now having you write this account out for me, you know I grew up just fine. My wife Cora and I had our own passel of young'uns, eight to be exact. And each year at Christmas time, when we put out our vessels of the nativity, I would have them sing with me the words the animals sang that night in my dream. And I've heard the words since when our boy came back with a French wife after the Great War. She sang the song of the friendly beast. Maybe it really happened that night when Jesus was born that the animals talked. Maybe not. What I confess is that God who brought his son to earth to save us from ourselves can do anything. The donkey who carried him, the cow who gave him a bed, the sheep who clothed him, and the doves who gently sang him to sleep. All that would do for my Savior and more. And all that was taken away from him at the end of his earthly life for us. Amen.